Slap Pals, thanks for your questions. I'm about to get into it. First one from Monkey McPot. Tell us the whole story between myself and the Gipper. This might take a while, but um, first one. Let me think back. I haven't been on Slap in years, so that was probably f five years ago? I'm not sure, but the whole story is this. Through the years, people would send me stuff from slap about hey this guy's talking shit who is this i'm like fuck i got no idea the gipper no no clue then a couple more years every time something would come up my name more shit talking i'm like who is this is this an x team rider is this like who is this so this started making myself like think more like who is this person like i ha i know that i know him it's for sure i know him i just want to know who it is so i can like laugh about it and talk to him and then um um, somebody sent me a direct message with his information and I hit him up and I was like, hey, this is Mike. I just want to holler at you and like, what, what, what's, you know, <laughs> what's, what's the beef, you know, like not even pissed. Just like, what the fuck's going on? And I reached out to him. He didn't reach back. He didn't hit me back. So I just posted on Instagram like, oh man, for years, this person has been talking shit. And then it turns out it's this guy. And then, um, I think I went to go eat. And I came back home and there was like a million messages. Fuck you. From how, how, why did you do this? So then the next morning I woke up and there was like a thousand messages on my phone from like, uh, I guess the Gipper had checked his email from where I reached out to him. But he was probably busy and didn't get back to me in time. But I left my number and so he posted my number on Craigslist. And I can't remember what it, what, it, what it was, but it was really funny. Like he he said something like, I don't know, like, Free, cl free classic car, come get it, just need help loading it up or so, just something so ridiculous where everybody would call. So I had all these messages for like the whole day and uh, blew up my email, blew up my phone, text messages, just my, my phone was like overheating from it. And uh, and then I reached out to him, I was like, hey, <laughs> like you got my, he got my info on Craigslist, this is fucking funny, but take it down, let's talk. And something happened, we got connected, Somebody through Slap contacted me and him, I think, and was like, hey, you guys should talk. And uh, so we talked, and the way he explained, like, we had never met. Like, I thought for sure it was somebody that I knew. But the way he explained it to me, why he was always pissed at me is that, and I never thought of this, he was like, I think of you as, like, the coach of a basketball team or, like, you know, so, something like to, to that extent. I don't want to get it wrong and get the giver pissed again. But, you know, he just has his opinion, too. And even though I don't voice my opinion, but I guess he sees my opinion doing these certain things. He's like, fuck that, you know? And, and that makes sense to me. So I was just like, okay, I get it. You know, I, I just thought that this was like an old friend that I was like, or an old team writer that was really pissed. And uh, I, you know, either way, I thought it was funny. And then we laughed and we were talking shit. And I told him if I was ever in his area that uh, I would hit him up to go get some food. So anyway, Gipper, I hope you're good. Uh, they say that you you're not on slap anymore so I, I don't i don't know where you're at but uh i still got your number so if i make it to your neck of the woods where I'm gonna, i told you i'm gonna hit you up we'll get some food for sure that's the whole story though it was nothing crazy and uh it was there was graphics floating around like buried the hatchet me and the the gipper it's pretty sick i wish i had one of those boards that'd be pretty sad to hang one on the wall for sure and I don't, I don't even have any wall i don't have any skateboards hanging on my wall at my house but i would hang that one up for sure who was the team rider demanding to bring their bike on on tour that you talked about in your Crail couch? So that's easy. That was um, Lindsey Robertson. He is like, I'm taking my bike. And I'm like, you're not taking the bike. He's like, oh, I'm taking the bike or I ain't going. And I was like, you're not taking the bike and you're going. So he went on the tour. There was no big beef, but he really wanted to bring that fucking BMX bike to uh, Barcelona. I didn't. I never made it there, so I hope, I hope Lindsay's well. I haven't seen, I think he's, I don't know if he's in Florida or if he's in California, but I haven't, I haven't seen him in a very long time. I hope he's good. Ashad and Westgate were going to almost ride for Toy Machine. 
Well, there's, let me get to that. There's no, yes and no. So I'll start with Ashad first. Ashad sent me an email way back, early days, Tom Yeto, um, before, before I knew who he was. Um, he sent me an email and his reference, one of his reference was Nick Merlino. He's like, Us, you know, I like Toy Machine, check out my stuff. Um, my buddy Nick, or I know Nick Merlino, I can't remember how he worded it, but in my head, it went like this. I'm somebody, I know Nick Merlino, can you hook me up? And I, I was like, there's no way we're giving Merlino's buddy a shot. So I fucked that one up bad. So I'm very sorry, but a shot is a legend, and I'm sure he's happy at real. And I'm, uh, I'm honored that he even thought of Toy Machine. And Nick... I owe you one, bud, for that one. Holy shit. Um, Westgate was almost going to ride for Toy Machine. So we all wanted Westgate to ride for Toy Machine when, I, th I think it was, who did he ride for before Element? Was it Zoo? Yeah, but before Element, I think he was off of Zoo or leaving Zoo. So we were on a trip. It was Leo, Dakota, I think... Burnett, a couple other guys were John Minor. We're all out just we we're actually filming in North Carolina is the trip where he gets pulled by the car and Ollie's up that massive like asphalt Euro step up and uh everybody was down. We barely talked about it, but we just wanted to hang out with him more. I haven't really I never hung out with him and he's the coolest guy. And I think after the trip we approached him and we were just like, Hey, would you wanna ride for Toy Machine? We all think you're the the best in the world and you know, you fit right in because we were all friends, and um, I don't remember if I don't remember if I asked him or if Leo did. I guess I can't remember. So much, so much stuff rattle around these brains. But anyway, he politely declined because he was like, "I'm actually gonna do this thing with Element, and I appreciate it." And I was like, "Damn it!" Because Westgate is one bad motherfucker, and I would have loved for him to be on Toy Machine. So he can write for Toy Machine whenever he, whenever he feels like it, he's got an open invitation. This is a question. Were you prescribed lemon heads by a doctor? That is true. I, I uh, was eating Del Taco one day at Tomietto, and I was sitting at a desk, and this side of my face right here, I felt it kind of, I don't know, it was kind of warm at first, and then it kind of just got fatter and fatter. I'm like, what in the fuck is going on? I turned to somebody, and I was like, hey, man, do I look crazy? And they're like, look pretty normal. I was like, hey, is this, is this swollen? They're like, they're like, a little bit. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I, I went into the bathroom and I could tell something was up. Like it was like swollen tiny bit. And then I, I just left. I was like, hey guys, I'm going home. Something's up. I, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. By the time I got home, it was out to here. And then by the time uh, my girl got home, I was like, hey, look at this. And it was like, it was massive. It was like disfigured face. And, uh, and she's like, what happened? Did you eat shit? And I'm like, no, I ate, well, I did. I ate shit. I ate Del Taco and it made my face explode. And she's like, what? And then so I started Googling all this stuff, freaked myself out, trying to self-diagnose like what, what I had. And it was just uh, all these horror stories of people's faces that, you know, swelled up on one side and never went down. And I would, I was so bummed. And then I just went to the doctor first thing the next morning and uh, he was asking me all these questions and I was just like, how bad is it? What happened? What am I gonna do? And he was like, do you, do you like lemons? And I was like, I fucking hate lemons. And he's like, he's like, well, do you like lemon candy? And I'm like, I love lemon candy. So he's like, well, go go get lemon heads or go get some type of sour lemon candy and just suck on it. And I was like, that's it? And he's like, yep, you gotta block the gland. And then I was like, is that bad? And he's like, it just needs to get unclogged and you're fine. And I was like. It's the best news I've ever heard. I went to the doctor, get prescri <laughs> prescribed candy that I love, and my face went back to normal. So that was true. That's a true story. Tell us the bet with Kenny Hughes that made him mad. There's two, there's two parts of this story. There are two separate stories about Kenny. Kenny's a good friend of mine. We grew up together in North Carolina. He lives in New York. I'm in California now. But um, the first story was... Um, I pissed him off so bad he would. I don't know if I want to say it because he might be pissed again. But uh, 
So we're in a bar in Woodward, Pennsylvania. What's the name of that town? Milheim or something is the name of the town out there. So um, he's gambling. He's he's the bank, right? So he's he's playing CeeLo, but he's in charge of the money. So he rolls, and it's like blackjack. Then everybody gets their roll. You know, you place your bet first, and then you go against the bank. Kenny's the bank, whatever. So I was betting two bucks, a dollar, or five bucks, whatever, just low, low rolling. Kenny's, you know, accepting bets up to a hundred bucks with people at the table. He does one roll, and I was like, "That's a sketchy ass roll." And he looked at me, dead serious. He's like, "What the fuck did you say?" I was like, "That's a sketchy ass roll." <laughs> and then he's like, he goes. You're cut, and I was like, "Huh?" And he skipped me, and he went, and I was like, "We're super good friends, or especially at the time, we're super close." And then I was like, "Fuck that! That's three bucks now. You can't skip me." And then, I, and then I was like, "You can pay me double next time." Then he's like, he just like pointed at me and didn't say anything. I was like, "Damn!" So then he went around again, skipped me again. I was like, "Hey, it's fucked up." I was just like oblivious, like talking shit to him, and then. Then he started losing other bets, and he felt like the bad vibes, right? So <laughs> he's like, he just—I can't remember what was the what was the final thing that I said to him, but he just grabbed his dice, grabbed his money, and he's like, "Step outside," and I was like, "I was like, he talking? Is he talking to me? Well, he want me to step outside?" He left. He went outside the bar. Everybody that was at the gambling table was like, oh shit, like, I'm good, putting their money back, whatever. Then I'm just still sitting at the table, like, just like this, just like, like a scene in a movie, just like this dude, just at this table, about to get his ass whooped. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not going outside. It's like 10.30, like, I don't even drink. I stayed I stayed at the bar till, till like, the people at the bar left. And I opened the, opened the thing at like 3 a.m. I was like, I was like, damn, he ain't here. And then I, I got a ride home with somebody because Kenny drove me to the bar. I got a ride home or back to Woodward with somebody. And then the next day he like flew to Europe. And I was like, oh, good. He'll forget all about this shit. He'll be back in like 10 days, whatever. I was staying at Woodward for that long. And then um, he gets back and I see him across the camp. And I was like, nothing. And I was like, he's like, nothing. We get closer and he's like, come here. I was like, oh man, he is gonna whip my ass right here. He, he wants me to come over where nobody's at. He's gonna fuck me up. He didn't forget. I was like, damn it. So I went over there, I was like, I'm gonna take it. I guess I'm just gonna have to take it. He went over to his car and he goes, look inside. I was like, man, he's gonna kill me. <laughs> I opened his car door, I was like, what is it? And he goes, see that steering wheel? I was like, yeah. He goes, look at it. And I was like, Steering wheel looks fucked up. And he goes, yeah, because I bent that motherfucker on the ride home when you're talking about I got a sketchy roll. And I was like, damn, you bent your steering wheel? So the fucking Honda Accord steering wheel said it like this. It was like, eh. He drove home from the bar. So that could have been my head, my face, my leg, just twisted and fucked up. So that's story number one. So don't tell Kenny he got a sketchy roll, ever. The second one, this was years, many years later. We were at a damn am parking lot contest. I think we were judging it. I don't know why he was there. He, he was probably a judge too, but um, it'd been a while. Like he hadn't been pro for a while, or, or shit, probably gonna be beat up again. Maybe he was still pro. I, I don't even know. But uh, he was. We were there watching this am contest, and there's a steep quarter pipe in the corner, and I saw like a kid do a blunt to fakie on it, and Kenny used to have really good or has great blunt to fakies and I was like Kenny you think you can still do a blunt to fakie and he looked at me so fucked up like like I disrespected his whole family when I asked him that question he he I can't even imitate it but the look he gave me when I asked him if he could still blunt to fakie was like I'll fucking kill you <laughs> and I was like he goes put something on it and I was like 30 bucks and he he walked out there and he dropped in the he dropped in a big bank and he rode across like a pi the pyramid and when he rode across something shuffled with his feet I was like oh he's <laughs> I was like I got 30 bucks he rolled down the thing adjusted his feet pow perfect blunt fakey and then as he's rolling back way across the course he's looking at me like this and just like 
Never, never doubt Kenny Hughes is the moral of the story of both of those stories. Never doubt Kenny Hughes. He will fuck you up. I'm so lucky that I'm still alive. But uh, I miss you, Kenny. I hope you're good. I, I talked to him. Uh, talked to him last week. He's in New York doing good things. Bobby Worst was almost on decline. That's a true story. He was he was gonna ride for decline, and he was filming. I think he was filming for True Blue, or it was very short. Um, and then he got swooped up by Nike and Scuba called him up and then no more decline. So that was, that was going to happen. That would have been a really good addition to the uh, True Blue video because Bobby's the shit. Blake Carpenter was on Foundation Flow before Toy Flow and I didn't realize it. That's 100% true. This is crazy. So Billy was telling me about this kid, Blake, and he was like, he's super good. He's super good. I was like, let me see the footage. Billy showed me the footage, and I was like, this, this, this is not good. And then Billy's like, he's fucking good in person, I swear. And I'm like, well, can you film him next time you see him, and I'll watch it? But what you're showing me is garbage. And he's like, okay. And then I'd forgotten all about that. Then Blake Carpenter sends me a video, probably a year or two after that. So there's no way I'm going to put two and two together that this was the kid in Billy's video in Corona that this thing's coming from Florida. Anyway, so Blake Carpenter sponsored me tape comes in. I'm like, oh my God, this guy is really good. He's got a good style, he's got a good trick selection. He's just looks good on a board. I was like, what do you want? I'll give you foundation boards and we'll start there. He was super stoked. Then he sent me another update or two. And I was like, man, this kid is really good. And then a year went by, or maybe nine months, I got, a, I got a sponsor me tape or I got a footage update either sent to me. I think someone sent it to me. This is how it got confusing. Someone else sent it to me, not Blake, but it said, hey, this kid Blake um, wants to send you some footage. And I was like, sick, let me see it. And I was like, man, this kid is good. This kid is really good. I was like, I'm gonna put him on toy machine, <laughs> toy machine flow. So not even knowing that it was the same Blake Carpenter it just looked different from what I remember. It probably it probably looks exactly the same, but I don't know. I, you know, you lose touch with somebody, and then someone else sends you the footage. You're like, man, this kid's good. Even just, I'm just watching the skating, so I'm not thinking about the name or where they're from or anything. And no one had heard of Blake Carpenter yet, except for except for Billy. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna give you toy boards. And he was super stoked. He kept sending me updates. Then Billy was like, who's the flow team? And I'm like, oh, we got this kid, this kid, and this other kid named Blake. I'm really psyched on. It. He's like, you fucking idiot. That's the guy that I told you that was really good. I'm like, that's the same guy that was in the parking lot on a wooden bench that you showed me with a wrist guard. And he's like, yeah, stupid. I told you, was, I told you was super sick. And I'm like, I, <laughs> there's no way I put it together. Then, how did I find out that Blake was the foundation guy? I can't. I think Blake told me, and I, and then it all clicked. I'm like, wait, that was you. What happened? And he's like dude, I got like a girlfriend and just kind of lost it for like nine months. And <laughs> I don't know. It was so, such a dumb story, but Blake wrote for foundation, wrote for toy machine. And then Billy was the first one that found him. I found him two, <laughs> two more times after that. And then yeah, Blake Carpenter killing it. So hopefully next video part, you see a Blake Carpenter, you'll, you know, you'll recognize him. Unlike me, cause I'm an idiot. And can't remember who's sending me <laughs> footage. I've seen so much. There's one on here, it's not that great of a story, but it's kind of funny. You almost have to be there type story. So there's a boner line at the old Durham courthouse that I filmed. So my friend Bob and I used to go there. You could only skate the courthouse on the weekends or late at night. So such a long time ago, it's gone now, but bet my, one of my favorite spots ever. And we would go there and just all week we'd be working at the skate shop. And then we'd think of like, oh, what do you want to do this weekend at the courthouse? That was like our skate park, you know? So we just were like, oh, I wanna do like nose ground 180, I wanna try a flat ground trick, then I wanna hit the last bench. And the, at the time the last bench was not really broken in, so that it was kind of hard to get something on it. So, and I was terrible at lines. Every person I knew was terrible at lines. So it was like, you felt like you really did something if you put three, four, five clips together. So and I don't remember the line, but I remember the last trick, which I don't know why I was trying to get this last trick so much, but I think it was probably the first trick and the second trick gave me the problem, but the the last trick was just like a, a back 50-50 across this, I don't know how long the bench was, and then just nollie 180 out, right? Just like back 50-50 and just try to nollie out of it. And then we were filming with a, um, 
with the century fish, whatever one, I don't know if it's, not when it first came out, but whatever, it was just, you can get super close like this, right? So, <laughs> so do the 50-50 Nolly 180 out, and then Bob's right there filming it, boom, right when I land, his camera's like right here. And then, <laughs> back then I had these, uh, I don't know what kind of pants they were, but they were the button fly, and they were just bunched up like this, like, and landing right there with the fisheye right there and I, Bob's like hell yeah you got it and then I was like oh shit let me see it and I look at it and then and I was like this is terrible he's like what's wrong I was like it looks like I have a fucking boner when I land the trick like I, and he's like he was like well did you you tried it for so long I'm like hell no I have a, <laughs> I have a boner <laughs> landing a 50-50 180 so anyway the line's never been seen um hopefully Bob has deleted that footage because it was ridiculous and uh yeah, the boner line, rest in peace. Nobody should ever see that. This is also a Bob story. Tell us about the shoe that I threw at my girlfriend during a contest. That is not true. So Bob Reynolds is a salesman, but when this happened, he wasn't a salesman yet. So he always likes to sprinkle something on top to get you to buy the story or to buy the product. So contest was <laughs> in North Carolina. It was on a mini ramp and there wasn't that many contests, so we all drove out there, and I think Neil Hendricks and uh, Pete Thompson and whoever the top guys were at the time were, were skating the mini ramp. I, I can't remember, but um, I didn't even know Bob at this time. So Bob was there, obviously. Um, I showed up with my girlfriend at the time, and uh, my ankle was jacked, but I was like, I'm going to skate it anyway because they built this mini ramp in this parking lot. Anyway, so I skate the mini ramp. I tried to take a run or maybe it was just during practice and I couldn't skate. I did one trick and I'm like, man, I just can't skate right. Like I was super bummed. And then I remember I barely tweaked it and it, so it just hurt super bad. And then I, I remember I had a Chuck Taylor. I just took the Chuck Taylor off and I was like, damn it. Threw the Chuck Taylor towards the car and I just got in the car and we were out of there. We probably went to Wendy's or something, <laughs> but, but, uh, Bob tells a story that I didn't make the cut and I was so pissed I took my Chuck Taylor and threw it at Tina and then, <laughs> and then I got in my car and peeled out. <laughs> that's, that's a much better story, but it's not true. And uh, so, yeah, you had to be there. That was Garner, North Carolina. I don't know what year, but yeah, definitely didn't throw a shoe at my girlfriend at the time, <laughs> no matter how funny that sounds. <laughs> Um, off kilter. Are you ever impressed by skateboarding these days after seeing so much crazy stuff over the years? Um, that's a good question. I'm super impressed every time I go out with all these people, but I, I, I don't think I, I show it. Like, uh, Jaws is the only person that's ever brought it up to me. Like, he's jumping off roofs. He's like doing the, you, I mean, if you've seen a Jaws video part, everything in there is shocking. So, um, I can't, we were filming for the decline video and he was, super like concerningly kind of pissed but but just concerned why I wasn't like uh jumping up and down and running over giving him a hug and he so he was like he was like Mike what is it man nothing I do is like good enough for you huh and I was like what and he's like you hate what I'm doing and I'm like what what are you talking about and uh it was all in his head but I was like dude I'm stoked on everything you're doing you wouldn't be on this team if I I wasn't stoked on you and uh I'm out here, I got like a million things going on, people calling me, cops are coming, all this stuff, but when you do a trick, I'm like so stoked that you didn't end up in the hospital because your stuff is like death defying. And uh, I was like, I'm not a cheerleader though. I'm like, I don't know what you want me to do. Like, do you want me to sing and dance like when you land tricks? Anyway, it, it wasn't even an argument, but I had to explain to him that like, I just like this question, I've seen so much crazy stuff. Like sometimes it's like, sometimes it's probably just, I don't even like, it looks like, oh yeah, I've seen that a million times, but I'm like inside, I'm just like, holy shit, you see what just happened, but my expression maybe just isn't there, you know, I'm just like thinking of something else, like, all right, how long is it going to take to pack this wood in the van, because we got to go to this next thing, so could be the craziest thing ever done, and I'm just sitting there like this, like, sick, <laughs> but it's, I, yeah, I don't know, um, but yes, I'm still impressed, shocked, it's insane what's going on out there. Cuban links. Why does Nick Merlino suck so bad? He doesn't. Nick Merlino doesn't suck. He's funny. He's crazy. He's got ADD, HD, and 
he's one of the most funny people I've ever met. And uh, is he annoying? Yes. Does he suck? No. He's awesome. You would love him. I don't know how he's put up with us for 10 years, and I don't know how we've put up with him for 10 years, but he's awesome. I'm glad that he's still on foundation and doing his thing. I'm going to go down to Friendly Dave. He's got a bunch of questions. I'm only going to answer a few of them because there's so many. Um, let's see. The weirdest place I've ever slept was in the Houston Skate Park of Houston Baby Bowl in the back. Um, I don't know why we did that. We were, maybe we were just trying to save money. It was a, some friends, and we went to a contest, and we're like, let's sleep in the skate park. It'd be sick. And it was a terrible, terrible idea. Have I ever shit my pants? No, not yet. I'm pretty clogged up from all the cheese pizzas, but uh, I'm good right now. Underwear is clean. Foundation seems like a team that's heavy on the rails and gaps. Who has the best tech flat ground game? I'm going to say Glick or Merlino is the techest guy we got. We don't have any super tech guys, um, but we're not opposed. For some reason, we just don't have those. So um, we'll see. But Nick Nick's really good at flat ground, and so is uh, Glick. Who has the best invert? Mike Frazier has the best inverts of all time, in my opinion. What is your go-to van playlist, and what is the next song up on your most recent personal playlist? I don't play music in the van. I just let the guys play whatever they want like they're the ones trying to get hype so I'm usually a fan of whatever they're playing um but yeah I don't even have a playlist I'm like um I'm super cheap like uh I have um the free app was it called Pandora so this would be my playlist I have it on Van Halen radio for some reason so this is a uh, this is what's playing right now Everybody Wants Something by Van Halen. It's kind of the, uh, I call that song the promo song because it's, uh, it's uh, Everybody Wants Some. It's the story of my life. Everybody wants some shoes, boards, grip tape, hats, nonstop. Um, just email me your request if you're on the team. I got you. Um, but yeah, no, no playlist. I don't have anything. Just whatever the guys are feeling, I'm down. Who has the best mini rep sessions and what is the best thing you've seen go down on one of those sessions? I don't know anybody that has a mini ramp. I wish I did. Gavin Bacher has a mini ramp. Um, he's 12 years old. Me and Burnett went over there a couple weeks ago and it was depressing because he's 12 and he's amazing. And then here's the two old guys just trying to do pivots and rock and rolls and Gavin's killing it. Just, yeah. And we're looking at each other like, dude, you, should we just go get food? And they were just like, yeah, we should probably just go get some food. So, um, Gavin's insane. He's got an awesome mini ramp, but I'm waiting for the day, if the day ever comes where I can have a mini ramp of my own and invite people my own age over. And those would probably be the best mini ramp sessions. Bunch of old guys eating shit and uh, laughing, maybe crying. What is something that you see in sponsoring tapes that make you say yes, no? I'm more curious about the no. So the, it's not that it's a no, but the, the thing that I hate the most is someone sends you a, uh, a sponsor me tape and it's edited like a real video where it starts with a slam section and it starts with like this build up and it's like, dude, you're already pissing me off. But uh, I watch them all. So if I could give you any advice, just don't don't hype yourself up that much. Just get straight to business and just make it sick and like put it in there. No music is preferred. Just just get straight to the point and uh yeah, if your skating is ripping, like I'm, sh I'm gonna get back to you for sure. What is my favorite skateboarding memory? My favorite skateboarding memory is back in the day with my friends in my driveway. Um, it's where it all started. Like we just having a good time. Go back to those days would be awesome. If I had to nominate a skateboarder that should do a slap pals question, who would you nominate? I'm nominating Billy Marks. I tried to FaceTime him earlier. He's at home sick right now, but he says he's gonna do this. So expect a Billy Marks. Um, pal's question in the future. Feed me Seymour. Let's see, any up-and-comers that we should know about? I would say that there's an overabundance of up-and-comers. There's so many people, it's, it's, it's frightening how many people are coming up. I just don't know where all, all of them are gonna go because there's too, there's too many of them, which is a good problem. So there's so, so many good skateboarders out there, it's, it's crazy. Can you tell Zion when you see him that watches are worn on the non-dominant hand? 
And my answer to that is no, I can't tell him because he's not going to listen to me. Zion does what he wants, and uh, he's killing it. So he can wear a watch on his ankle if he, if he feels like it, I guess. What pocket do you keep your wallet in or front pocket people weirdos? I keep my wallet in my front pocket at all times, so I know it's right there. Phone, keys, wallet, all right there. So never the back pocket because I don't want to get pickpocketed or I don't want Merlino sneaking up on me grabbing the company card and then uh, fucking us up even worse. So, um, Has that happened before? Nah, no one stole the card. People try to get the card. Mike, give me the card real quick. No. Nah. Francis Xavier, who's a bigger pain in the ass, Nick Merlino or Billy Marks? It's a great question. I'm going with... Um, I'm going with Nick Merlino. He's 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 a bigger pain in the ass, but he's also a better sport than Billy. Billy's a pain in the ass when things don't go his way. He's grumpy Bill. You don't ever want to see grumpy Bill. Um, Nick, Nick will uh, get pissed, but then he comes around because he's a team player. Bill, you don't want to get on Billy's bad side. He's old grumpy Bill. You don't want to fuck with Bill. Fuck. With, nobody wants to fuck with grumpy Bill. I'm going to Tony Volume. Whatever happened to that footage of Elijah Burrow overcrooking that 16 in North Carolina? I have B-side footage, held onto it for years. So, this is somebody I know, but I, I, I can't think of who Tony Volume would be. I can't think of the other filmer that would have been there for that, but that was, that was 10 years ago, man. That was, I'm gonna say that was a long time ago, but if you have the footage of Elijah Burrow, <clears throat> the B-side of it, post it up, tag us up. I'd love to see it. I'm sure Elijah would like to see it too. The only thing I remember from that session is him going there, getting ready. Rodent was trying to set up. Elijah does it first try. And Rodent was pissed because Elijah didn't wait for him. So he had to, he had to set up the, the, all the stuff and ask Elijah to do it again. And then I remember there an argument about him doing it with a hat on or, or no hat on. And I think Elijah had this like, party hat that he got from somewhere and he wanted to wear it and Rodent was pissed because it wouldn't look good in the photo so I can't remember if the footage or the photo has the party hat or no party hat so post the post the photo or maybe you remember the argument at the spot so uh, I thought it was hilarious but uh, tell me what you remember from it and definitely post that footage favorite Nick moment favorite Glick moment my favorite Nick moment is King of the Road when we uh, when he found out that we pranked him the entire show and he took it like a champ, and uh, I think anybody else would have killed the entire team, but Nick, uh, Nick took it in stride, and he he was awesome about it. And then my favorite Glick moment is when we turned him pro um, before Souvenir and surprised him. His family flew out. His uh, sister flew out. It was awesome. It was good to see it. Uh, he's he's an awesome, dude. Glick's the man, and uh, yeah, I'm stoked he's on foundation. And then also there's these disturbingly awesome uh, gifts of Sinner and Loy dancing at like a house party. I don't know if you can see that, but I'd like to I'd like to go there and see that in person. Actually, it looks <laughs> looks insane. And then we have the beautiful Erica Yeri who is parting this the uh, parting the sea. So more power to Mrs. Yeri. Um, George Costanza. Why are those new kids who were introduced in Souvenir no longer on Foundation? It's a great question. So, let me get into that one. Um, John Clements and Cote Robinson were introduced in Souvenir, and now they're no longer with Foundation. John decided he wanted to do his own thing and not, um, yeah, just... He just wanted to do his own thing, and that, that it sucks because we all loved him at Foundation, and he he was going to be our next pro. He's he's an incredible skateboarder, but uh, I think he just wanted to take a different route and um, do his own thing. He, he's out in Louisville, Kentucky. One of the other things that they both said is they didn't feel like they were part of the team. So, I mean, they they live so far away. I I, I know what they're I know what they're saying. There's it's just them in Louisville, Kentucky, and everybody else on the West Coast. So. You can see how they feel detached, but man, I wish they didn't feel that way because I thought they brought a lot. I thought they both had a bright future with Foundation and um, they're incredible skateboarders. John Clements is one to look out for in the future. He is incredible on a skateboard. So 
I wish you guys both the best of luck. We didn't part on bad terms at all. We just that's just they just did what they wanted to do, which is sad. Sad for for uh, for me, man. I um, miss those guys already. My name is not Jeff. What is your current setup? I don't know. I have a I have a board with no graphic on it, and it's um it's a eight inch board with a fourteen wheelbase and it's short. And then I ride Venture High 5.0 trucks, which are probably the least popular truck that they have. But I've been riding those same style of trucks since 96. I just kind of keep keep it the same, right? So that's my setup. 51, 52, 53 if I'm feeling uh, like I need speed. But probably 52 is where I'm, where I'm going. Any people that you didn't pick up that now regret? Yes. Sean, I'm sorry. Jesus Christ, you put Nick Merlino as a reference in your email. But uh, I love Deluxe, and you're doing great, so don't sweat that shit at all. <laughs> we, we got Nick, all right? We got Nick. We're doing good. Most annoying rider to deal with when it comes to ordering boards. That's, that's, the, that's not even like a person. That's just a thing. So people email me all day long like, Yo, Mike, need some boards. Hit me with those boards. And it's like, dude, put your address in there. Put the apartment number. Put the shape. Put the graphic. Put the the special code that links back to your exact shape. I need all that information. And then I'll hit them back. Like, I need all the information. They're like, yeah, 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 send it to Long Beach. It's like, there's no pickup for Long Beach. Then they're like, yeah, yeah, send it to Joey's house. And it's like, dude, what is Joey's address? It just keeps going on. So anyway, that's the most annoying thing when it comes to uh, promos is just people just think it automatically shows up because you're in need. I don't save any addresses because everybody moves every week. So... Um, but then there's some people that never move. So like, dude, I've never moved. What do you mean you need my stuff? It's like, I'm not saving it because everybody's stuff changes. Um, if you could pick up anyone, who would you pick up? If I could pick up somebody right now, I'd pick up Yuto Horigomi because he is incredible at everything. And it's shocking what he can do on a skateboard, on a vert ramp, in a bowl, down a handrail, on a ledge. And... He's funny too, so all that matters, and uh, he's the best. I also like Eric Winkowski. Um, I mean, the no-brainers are Grant Taylor's and or Grant Taylor and so many good skaters. But I think what makes Grant Taylor and Yuto Horigomi such great skateboarders is that their dads were great skateboarders. So it's the second generation of ripping that's evolved, and it's 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 unreal. Dude, those guys are incredible. From straight, what's up with the Billy Marks, Nick T, embezzlement comments? I'm not sure what that means, but I'm going to say that Nick T started LE while he was still on Toy Machine, so if you want to call it embezzlement, you can. I don't call it embezzlement, and Nick T, you're not in trouble, and we love you, and uh, we hope you're well. And Nick T was is still one of my favorite skateboarders of all time. So... I hope he's killing it, and um, we miss you. Part two of Straits questions. Do you think Foundation gets the respect it deserves? The brand has a history of amazing skaters and videos, but it seems to fly under the radar among the elite industry brands. Um, that's tough to say. I, I mean, who am I to say that it gets or doesn't get the respect it deserves? But I, I think that um, the skaters that we have doing what they're doing for Foundation is incredible. And um, I'm honored that they're on the team and to be friends with them and to travel with them and to see all the crazy stuff they do. This is from Ciota. What is your favorite graphic? My favorite graphic is the Todd Conjolier graphic, the Icy Bear graphic from Liberty Skateboards. It's one of my all-time favorite graphics. Um, if you know what it is, then you probably rank it up there too, but I, I don't know. That was one of my favorite ones. Can you fix a just set of carburetor on, like, say, a lawnmower? And it's got a... <laughs> the video of um, Rhino having a meltdown outside of Home Depot. Uh, to answer your question, no, I can't fix, adjust, or set a carburetor. I have a lawnmower of my own in the backyard that doesn't work at all. I probably mowed the grass five times with it and it's just it's done. So I feel uh, Rhino's pain. Um, we all have those meltdowns. I'm with you, Rhino. I've been there many times. Not at Home Depot, but in life, I, 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 know, I know how it goes. This one's from The Lurper. Worst way a pro spent his contest winnings? 
Um, well, number one, you got to call Billy Marks, or when he does his thing, just ask him because he has, for sure, spent his contest winnings the worst way. Uh, number two is Kyle Burrard told me a story where he won like five grand at a mini ramp contest in Florida, and then for some reason, I, some reason he said he was drunk on the way home. His friend was driving, and they rolled down the window and just threw a grand out on the freeway. So that sounds like a terrible way to, to spend the, the winnings, but at least he still had four grand left. And a side note to that one, I, I love this name, but uh, there was a girl that Kyle said that one of his friends, <laughs> I can't remember, but they used to call her Trailer Swift. So it was a some cute blonde that lived in a trailer park and they called her Trailer Swift. So you have to ask him about that. But I, I always that name is always in my brain for some reason, tra Trailer Swift. But uh, I love it. And Kyle's awesome. And to throw a grand out on the freeway, that was pretty... That's a pretty awesome thing to do. What retired foundation toy machine pro would you like to see come along on the next tour? Not to have them back on the team, but just to hop in the van and have fun. Um, that would be Nick Trapasso. It was always great times with him on the road. Uh, also Johnny Layton. Um, there's a bunch of funny stuff that goes down with those guys on trips. So I, please get in the van next time. Do any companies you work for help the young dudes manage their money or prepare for life after skateboarding? I think this, that my job is to help guide them, you know what I mean? But I'm not a financial planner. There's like a, there's agents out there that, that that's their specialty. So I, if I see somebody screwing up, I try to like talk to them first and then recommend people to them. But um, there's people that that's their um, specialty out there. So um, if you're making a bunch of money and you want to know the proper things to do, I'll introduce you to the right people. But I don't really do that. I can just give you some advice, and that's it. Okay, do the companies assist the skaters in obtaining medical care, insurance, extra pay that's supposed to go towards insurance company, doctor, blah, blah, blah? No, uh, n not the brands that I know. Um, there may be some brands, but usually if you're a 1099 contractor, independent contractor, that's up to you. Um, most skaters I know don't have it, which is sad. They should have it. Tommy Edo used to offer it. Um, we would pay, let's just say it was 50-50, we'd pay half, the skater would pay half, but they had to make, uh, give us proof that they actually had the insurance and we would cover half of it for them, but uh, a lot of guys wouldn't give us the proof because they weren't, they didn't have it, so they just wanted the extra money, so it just, it just, it was a nightmare to deal with that stuff, so please get your own insurance if you're a skateboarder, you need it, you never know when the, something's going to happen, but if I could vote for people to have insurance, 100% yes. This one is from uh, Janez. What's the most hot dogs you've eaten in a day? My record is 22 for when I was age 15. I don't ever seek out a hot dog. Um, if there's a hot dog on the grill at the end of the day at the barbecue and someone's like, Mike, get that dog. No, nah, I'm not, not touching that dog. Something better is coming up throughout the day. You can wait, but you don't really need that dog. But uh, I, I'm, maybe I'll eat the bun a little cheese in the bread or something but I don't, I don't need that dog and uh, I'm not looking for the dog I'm not hating on the dogs I'll eat a hot dog but I'm never looking for it so um, you ate 22 when you were 15 years old it's impressive I, I haven't ate 22 hot dogs in the last 22 years so dirty burger you're going out for a steak how do you have it prepared also any steak sauce or are you just raw dogging it for steak I, I'm getting it medium well and if I'm in a nice steakhouse, I'm not bugging anybody for uh, the sauce or, the, you know, whatever it comes with. I like peppercorn sauce, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm not asking for anything. It's kind of uncomfortable when the place is too nice for some reason because I'm not used to that shit. But uh, if I'm at the Texas Roadhouse, bring me the barbecue sauce. Probably ask them three times, hey, let me get the barbecue sauce. You got the barbecue sauce? I need some barbecue sauce. But, uh... That's what I'm putting on the steak, some barbecue sauce. The Texas style barbecue sauce, not the Carolina style. I'm from North Carolina, but I can't do the Carolina barbecue sauce. Don't do that vinegar sauce, man, never. Gotta be that Texas smoky, sweet, good old barbecue. Maybe some Memphis, but none of that mustard, none of that vinegar, that sweet barbecue sauce.
Baby Ray's no talking about. We've all heard that Jamie Thomas seems to be very controlling over certain things. Does he do it in a flat out direct way or is he more passive aggressive about it? Jamie Thomas gave me a job. I worked for him for probably five years. Super thankful. He's the boss. So like what he says goes. So you just kind of, you want confrontation, you go against him. You, you want to have a good time, just do what he says. But uh, I've gone against him a bunch of times, but uh, he's, uh, he's the boss. So what are you going to do? I can't believe what he's done in skateboarding, man. It's, it's incredible. He, he, I seen him as a kid and where he came from and then where it went and kind of where it's at now and like he it, dude it's incredible he's 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 done it all he did sweat me over a dirty microwave though in the team room and i didn't use that fucking microwave but i cleaned that motherfucking microwave so but we love you jamie thoughts on puggles i mean anything with a little pug in it i'm down for that's like the pug is, you know holds a spot in my heart so um yeah why not i mean mix the more cross pug breeds out there the better i say so puggles yeah i'm down i just don't have one but I, i've hung out with some puggles in my time funniest way someone has asked for a box i mean i don't know if it's funny but it's like it's funny to me people hit me up they're like yo man just want to reach out let you know like i need some shoes i blew through my shit crazy and um so like yeah what's up with that box and i'm like I mean, I don't even know. Like, should I send him a box? Like, that dude's not getting a box. But, I mean, that's pretty funny that someone thinks that, like, because they blew through their shit, they need a box. Or, you know, they fucked up their board, so they need a board. It's like, dude, get a get a job. Get that, get that board. Get that box. Get them shoes. Thanks for taking some really dumb questions. No problem, Dirty Burger. You got Gwen Stefani in his thing for some reason. Heather Chandler. Was that her name from Heather's? Because he's got the girl from Heather's in there. That movie's awesome. I, I, I gotta watch that again. I've seen it a few times. What was Marquise Preston like to deal with? He ripped. Yes, he did rip. He does rip. Marquise Preston, I loved him to death, man. Um, I put him on foundation and things just didn't work out. It just didn't vibrate um, with the crew and um, it was a bummer, man. I, I didn't see him do much after that, but uh, I love that dude, man. He's got such a awesome style and his approach and just how how kind of a i don't want to call him a weirdo but he likes just the strangeness that he had to him was i loved it dude i thought he was i was gonna turn him pro for foundation he's sick as fuck is todd swank a cool boss seems like he would be yes todd swank is the coolest boss so thank you todd for everything sunscreen or sunblock i Maybe that's why I'm sunburned all the time. I don't know the difference. What the fuck's the difference between sunscreen and sunblock? I, I'll tell you this. I have this, uh, everybody laughs at my sunscreen or sunblock that I have. It's a, it's, I don't know the brand, but it's whipped. You have to Google it. It's a, uh, you, you press it out of this tube and it comes out like whipped cream. And uh, everybody thinks I'm getting ready to eat like a handful of whipped cream, but I'm just putting it all over my face. So uh, that is the best sunblock or sunscreen I've ever had and you put it on and it feels like it's not there so that's I'm I'm gonna special order the whipped sunscreen for the rest of my life OS 89 how do you think cater is going to progress I think cater is gonna progress at a rapid pace how could he not he's around some of the best skateboarders in the world and he's I mean if you're given the chance to get out on the road and go on trips and get paid from skateboarding at such a young age I think you're gonna really go places so uh, cater's awesome do you have as much fun goofing off and talking shit with cater as you do billy marks and merlino it's different i think that uh i mean cater's a kid still and he, he's gonna grow he's gonna fuck me up one day he's gonna beat my ass one cater mark my word he's gonna beat my ass one day but uh yeah when i see him like he i don't know why i didn't even know him that good and then he was just fucking with me from the start like taking my hat but like slapping me like rubbing shit on my face or like i don't just little kid shit and then throwing water on me and like and i thought it was funny so i was just doing the same shit back to him and then i was like fuck man i'm, I'm an old ass dude and i'm like doing this little kid shit right now but it was fun man I, I had a good time with him so um but i feel like when when he's like 25 years old he's probably gonna fuck me up you, you know what uh, i just thought of this Deshaun Jordan and Zion, they did the same shit when they were younger, and um, but they weren't as small as as Cater from what I remember when they used to do this. But 
they would come up behind me and put me in a headlock and shit, and it fucked my neck up for like a week. So they, uh, they're rough, man. They gotta watch it, man. I'm an old man out here doing this shit. So yeah, I have a good time talking shit with any of these guys, man. It's it's a, it's a fun job, and I like all these dudes that I work with, and they're all different in uh, and what they bring to the table and how funny or crazy they are. Oh, and this kind of goes into the next one. Does it keep you feeling youthful being with the younger dudes, or is it draining? I said both. I mean, be with a bunch of kids half your age, it's like fun. But yeah, at the end of the night, like they're still going. Like Cater's got video games with him. He's playing till three, four in the morning. Like I'm out. Like we went and had that last meal. I'm in the hotel. I'm done. But uh, yeah, I, it keeps keeps me young, but it drains me for sure. I saw a Colin Provost board on the latest episode of the TV show Baskets. Did they ask anyone for per for permission, or how does that work? I, I don't know the TV show you speak of, but um, no, they probably didn't ask per permission. Well, they wouldn't ask me for permission anyway, so maybe they got permission. I don't know. Usually they come to me, and then I have to put them in touch with the person to get their permission, but I've never heard of Baskets. They didn't call me, but stoked that it's on the TV show, so permission granted. Keep it up there. If you need another one, hit me up. If you need a Nick Merlino for the wall, hit me up. We got plenty of those laying around the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried the new Reese's Thins? How about thicker chocolate ones? Or are the classic cups the best? I mean, you got to go classic cups. I haven't tried those Reese's Thins. I just saw a commercial for them today. It caught my eye. But um, the thicker one, I wonder if he's talking about the thicker ones where they put like Reese's pieces in them too. I've, I've had those for sure. Those are good as fuck. Yeah, but the classics, you can't go wrong. Oh, and the mini cups for Halloween, they're like Tic Tacs, dude. The whole bag's gone. And it's usually not hot outside, so like you just pop in those things all day. So yeah, get you some of those little ones, man. D, any good stories from when you lived in Tampa? So whoever D is, that's crazy, because nobody knows that I lived in Tampa. I mean, people do, but most people don't know that I lived in Tampa. I lived in Tampa for one year in the 90s. So I got two good stories when I lived in, in Tampa. Um, one of them is I lived with Paul Zitzer, I was dead broke. I didn't have a job. I just had like free skateboards that people were sending me and shoes, but it wasn't it wasn't like today. It was just a little bit of product. So um, Zitzer was going to school, but then we would skate at night. So I'd be around the house all day long until he got home from school. Then we'd either go street skating or go to the park or do both and then just repeat cycle. But he didn't have anything in his house. It was like all blank walls. It was, a, it was an apartment behind the University Mall in Tampa, which is now like one of the roughest neighborhoods in Tampa. So we lived there, and one day he brought home, or he, he one of his friends worked at a record store or something, and they're like, hey, we got posters, stop, come on by, free posters. Paul came home, Paul Zitzer loves the B-52s, and he came home with the same B-52 poster, so it was like, love shack or something something ridiculous and he put the same poster in like the living room the bathroom his bedroom the hallway his b52 everywhere he looked same fucking poster and then we had some people over like you know before we had to come skate and um they like were hanging out and you know walk through the house whatever you, you can't miss the b52 poster it's like they're everywhere so they would come in like B-52, like, that wasn't, like, a, the band that, like, anybody that we skated with was, like, oh, sick, B-52s. It was, like, everybody's looking at it, like, B-52s. Then they walked down the hall, like, fucking B-52, taking a piss. God damn, I'm out over the B-52s. So people thought that Zitzer and I were a couple, and we loved the B-52s, and we lived in Tampa together. And that was, that's fucking funny when you think about it. But, no, uh, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that is ridiculous, but I can see why they think that. I would think that too if I walked into a house that was that fucking stupid looking. But Zitzer is awesome for letting me stay on his couch. Um, I would wake up in the middle of the night and turn the AC way down. He would have it set at like 78. I'd sneak up like 3 in the morning, 71. It's fucking humid in t Tampa, man. You gotta turn the AC way down. Uh, the other good story from Tampa, uh, I. We go to the skate park every day. I knew Brian Schaefer before, before he started the skate park. So he was a good friend of mine, and I was just I don't know, I was just stupid or just not thinking or just like a dick. I, I don't know, all three possibly. But uh, there was a kid in the skate shop, and I was just in the skate shop, just chilling. Just that was the only place that had air conditioning. So 
I was in the skate shop chilling. This kid comes in, he's like looking for a board. And Brian's like, what are you looking for? He's like, I don't know, just kind of looking around. I see the kid like looking and picking up some boards. And Brian's like, hey, I'm getting lunch. I'm, I'm out of here. You guys watch the shop. And then like, I don't think he left anybody in charge. He just, this was the early Tampa day. So he walked out and he went to lunch. And then I don't know what I was thinking, but I was like, I can't, I was like, hey man, you looking for a board? He's like, yeah. I was like, what are you looking for? He's like, I don't really know. I'm like, you're going to buy a board from here? You're an idiot. I got tons of boards in the trunk. He's like, what? What do you got? And they were evil boards. So I didn't tell him because I knew he would say no. So I was like, just come check them out. I got some good shapes. They're in the, in, the, in the trunk outside. We walk outside, pop the trunk, sell them the evil board for 20 bucks. I'm stoked. 20 bucks back then could last me a week, week and a half. I roll it up. I put 20 bucks in my ear right here in my hat. I go into the game room. Mike Frazier and a couple other people were playing pool. And then I was like, I got next. I'm up next. I got money. And then, uh, whatever, made my day. Just made 20 bucks. Walked into the game room, was chilling. Uh, Schaefer comes back. And the guys had bought, the guy was in there buying grip tape, like gripping his board up. And Schaefer's like, oh, man, thanks for, thanks for getting the board, man. What'd you get? Flipped it over. Evil board. And he was like, he didn't say anything. He just goes, Boom, turns the guy's boards over, walked to go find me, goes into the goes into the game room, doesn't say a word. I'm like, hey, what's up, Brian? D didn't even register my mind that I'm an idiot. Comes over to me, grabs me by the fucking neck, puts me on the wall, feet off the ground. I'm like, huh? He's like, you fucking asshole. What the fuck is wrong with you? You just sold a kid a board that was going to buy a board in my shop. You sold him one of your piece of shit evil boards. And here you are in the game room and blah, 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 blah. Like, you, I'll let you skate here for free. If you need grip tape, I'll give you a grip tape. If you need a new bearing, you know you can get a bearing. Like, how the fuck? You fucking up my business. And I was like, it wasn't like that I was like upset like I was going to cry. But I felt it at my heart. Like he was like had me by the neck, and I didn't even I didn't even like feel it. I was off the ground and probably about to die. I was just like soaking it all in. I was like, just my heart dropped. I was like, man, I am such an idiot. Like, what am I doing? Like, this dude is the coolest dude, and he's right. He's like he's opened up his world to me, and I'm the fucking asshole that sold him this shit, this fucking board. And then he's like, we don't even sell evil skateboards here. But if you need to sell those piece of shits, I'll buy them from you. And I don't even want to buy those fucking things. And I was just like, dude. And then I like get, got the 20. And I was like, Brian, I'm so... And before he could say, he just slapped the, slapped the shit out of my 20. And he didn't want the 20 bucks. It was just to make a point. And ever since then, that was probably 1993. No, that was probably 1994. Park had been open a year. Ever since then, that's that's like a life-changing moment. That's like your big brother. That's like your dad. That's like someone just setting you straight. And I'm so glad that he did because it's like I just wasn't thinking, you know? Like I just didn't care. But every ever since then, like I still carry that over to the team runners I work with today. Like selling a board at the demo at the shop. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Don't. That's not cool. Not here. So thank you, Brian Schaefer. Like that was, I mean, dude. Thank you for letting me know I was an idiot. I, I needed it, and uh, I love you. And I'm glad the skate park of Tampa is still there. And uh, if I caught somebody doing that, I would. Uh, yeah, I couldn't. I probably couldn't pick anybody off the ground like you did. But uh, yeah, that was. <laughs> I deserved it, and thank you. So, <laughs> Cosmic Gypsies. What's the rarest shit you got in the archives? Boards, shoes, products, etc. And this awesome photo of Ricky Oila doing 5-0 hopefully to fakey it's I've never seen that photo for some reason it's awesome rare stuff I I just I don't I don't have anything but uh, I mean I got this Zorlac I don't think it's original I got a uh, I mean is the, is the, is the chimpanzee rare I mean I don't know rare oh I do got something rare this is in my hoarders video I got the NSS promo video <laughs> that's rare Nobody got that. I mean, this is pretty rare. It's got plastic on it. Useless one in toys. Mint condition. So, that's pretty cool. New Deal just came back. I'm a fan. Double Steve Burger. The guy that won all the stuff today. Hey, Mike, would you rather poop out a softball or pee out a marble? Ooh. Poop out a softball. I feel like I've pooped out a softball already. There's been some gnarly ones on the road. 
Pee out of marble. Mm-mm. Nah. I guess the softball, man. Wow. So, how big is a softball? Would I rather? I would rather not. I mean, you know what, Steve? You just got hooked up today, so I'm gonna I'm pass on this question, but I appreciate, appreciate it. But no, neither. Fuck no. Adam Abbas, any good Scott Bourne or Chet Childers stories? Okay. I'm gonna start with Chet Childers first. He's from North Carolina. They're both from North Carolina, obviously. That guy's probably from North Carolina. Um, Chet Childers, man, it was probably 90, probably 94. I drove across country. It was This was after... After I lived in Tampa or before, I'm not sure, but right around that same era, me, Chet, Zitzer, in Chet's old Honda Civic, pre-party Chet, he was nerd Chet, and um, we drove from North Carolina to San Francisco, and then to LA, and then San Diego, and then we just dispersed. I don't think we've made it back. I think. I don't know how we, I don't even know how we got back, but Chet was uh, in control. It was his car. It was a terrible trip. It was an awesome trip, but terrible. He was like, yeah, we got places to stay in SF, and we got this, and we got that. And then, like, we would get to San Francisco, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to call my buddy yet. And I'm like, what are you talking about, Chet? And he's like, uh, and this is before cell phones. He's like, yeah, we got to wait till the morning. I'm like, dude. So we get there at, like, you know, midnight. And then, so we slept in Chet's car in on the streets of San Francisco, and it's like, pff, terrible trip. Um, and and then Chet was visiting all of his sponsors and like getting them to help him out for the trip. So he would clog up a skate day for us to go try to get himself a hundred bucks, which, you know, you gotta respect the hustle, but I was like, damn, I just kinda wanted to go skate the, but now we're just sitting outside the Acme warehouse. Like, this sucks, you know? Like, anyway, and then Chet was really, um, Chet's awesome, by the way. This sounds like I'm talking shit on Chet, which I'm not trying to, but like, Chet, Chet wouldn't let me touch his radio. It was like, it was like, hey, don't, 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 don't press the buttons. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, the fucking buttons are there to be pressed so we could turn the fucking volume up, Chet. He's like, yeah, but don't, don't touch the buttons. I'm like, anyway, it was just like dumbass kids in a fucking Civic uh, all, all the way across country. There's gonna be like ridiculous stuff. I got us lost in the Ozarks. Uh, I woke up, it was snowing. I took a wrong turn. We get to SF, we didn't have a place to stay, we slept in the car. We get to San Diego, we stay with, I don't even know, but it was in Cardiff by the Sea apartments. I don't even, we skated every day. Uh, it was epic skate trip, but man, that was a rough trip. And uh, I'll never forget it. So that's my, that's my early Chet Childers story. As annoying as I'm saying Chet was, he would probably be like, hey, Sinclair was the most annoying fucking person. We were annoying each other. It wasn't like Chet was the problem. We were the we were the friction, you know? Uh, Zitzer stayed in the back, and he was like the dad. He would be like, well, you know, guys, if you just find, like, a good level on the stereo, you're fine. So you don't, neither one of you have to touch it. You know, just like, it's so stupid. But uh, epic trip. Um, Scott Boren. Um, so Scott Boren is from a small town in North Carolina. Um... He had a really awesome mini, I think he had two mini ramps in his backyard. And um, I would go skate them sometimes, would see him around all the time. Um, there was some, uh, uh, what was it, some some beef back in the day with a couple of our friends. So Scott was, um, uh, we weren't that friendly after a while. So I remember, so we were, we were at a contest at, uh, and Scott, like, I don't know, like, shinned himself on his board or something. And then uh, he took his board. He was bashing in his head, like, just, like, screaming, like, fuck. And then I was just rolling by. And I think I, like, just smiled or laughed, like, <laughs> something. And as I was doing it, he, get, he grabbed me by my neck. And he's like, you motherfucker, just, uh. No, he didn't even say. He just grabbed me, like, ah. And then I was like, uh. And then he just held it for what it felt like five minutes. But it was probably five seconds. And then, um. Uh, and they just let me go, and I was like, "Man, what the fuck, Scott?" And then uh, that was it. Like Scott was um, Scott was pissed at me through mutual friends, and like, uh, yeah, he was uh, he was Scott crazy ass Scott Borden. But uh, he lives in Paris. My buddy wrote it. Just went out there and stayed with him uh, a month ago, and he's doing good. So yeah, anybody from Carolina is a friend of mine. So I got no. No beef with Scott Bourne. I think he's awesome and creative and funny and and rad. So, um, is skateboarding overly fat phobic? 
No, it's the year of the fat boy. It's like, dude, we're, we're big. It's time to go big right now. 2020, you don't even know what's about to hit, man. Everybody's going to be bigger. It's, yeah, big boys are going to run this shit soon. Um, Foy? Foy's not even fat, dude. J. Lay was big boy. J. Lay's not fat. Uh, Jordan Taylor? He ain't fat. And he's not whack. Like, he's fucking tight, man. All these guys are sick. Who's fat? Like, who's like a fat? Like, I'm fat, but like, but I'm not a pro skater. Like, who's 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 the fattest pro skater? The fattest pro skater probably was John Reeves. Like, wouldn't you say? Like, he was. I mean, he was like a big dude. You know what I mean? Um, there was probably like a fat vert guy I'm forgetting about or something. Templeton? Yeah, maybe we have, but uh, not in his prime. There's no fat skaters. But, I mean, you can be fat and be a skater. That's really cool. I liked it. Yeah, Bob, Bob Reynolds is the fattest. No, I'm fatter than Fat Bob now. That's fucked up. God damn it. Yeah, I gotta go on a diet again. Snowman, 600. On a long drive, ever fuck with books on tape? No, I haven't. I, I don't, um, no. I just make phone call after phone call, and I turn on Pandora radio, and then that's it. And then sometimes, I'll, for hours, I'll just turn everything off and just roll the windows down I'm just like it gives me time to think I'm just I'm just out there what happened to Liabras so Liabras filming for this video has had three knee surgeries man he blew this ACL he blew that ACL then on our last trip just a couple months ago he tore his meniscus I feel so bad man he's um, one of the best dudes ever but he's serious about rehab and he's um He's almost skating again, so he's gonna have a full part in the toy machine video. And uh, so when you see his part, remember that he's gone through three insane knee surgeries. So imagine what he would even have if he didn't. And look at what he does have on three knee surgeries. It's, it's incredible. So I, I love you, Jeremy, and, and I hope you heal up and no more surgeries, please, God. Tuna, favorite mini ramp skater, Tom Penny. Tom Penny is my favorite mini ramp skater. I mean, he's not even a mini ramp skater, but he's Tom Penny, dude. Come on. This is the best. 1994, 95, 96, Tom Penny. That's my favorite mini ramp skater of all time. What does your gym routine look like? It looks terrible. Gym routine is terrible. But um, I just got into the gym early at the beginning of this year, and I was going every day, every other day. When I was riding the bike. I got it up to an hour. And I would get up to level five or six, and um, yeah, that's I mean, that's that's it. Then I would go sit in the jacuzzi, then I would go home. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, then I got off the routine when I get back on the road, so it kind of messed me up. Does Ed have any footage for toy machine video? Is it really a toy machine video without Ed footage? Good question. Ed does have a trick or two for the toy machine video. Programming injection comes out in October. Is it really a toy machine video without Ed? I don't know. Yeah. Ed's Ed's the man. Ed's it's his look and feel. It's his brand. He's putting the video out. It's a toy machine video. Anything with his name on it should um, have a little Ed magic on it. So he's working on some um, animation stuff. So Dark Throne. You ever take back a like on Instagram? You're looking through <laughs> maybe suggested for you page or whatever, going through like that's cool, then wait, I know that guy. He's a complete tool. I'll take it back. I found myself doing it once or twice, wondering if other people do it too. Have I taken a like back? I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure. If I'm gonna do it today, actually. When I charge this phone back up, I'm gonna go through and unlike some shit in, in your honor. But I know I've done that before. I mean, I've definitely hit something that I liked by accident and undid it, yeah, for sure, like every day. But then there's like, have I like purposely like scrolled through and looked at something and like, oh, I like that? I'm gonna take that back. I I feel like I have. Like why would I just I don't know. I'm like doing dumb shit on Instagram all the time. So and it shouldn't be taking it personal. It's probably to like f mainly to friends like like look at my sick new motorcycle and it's like unlike like unlike like, just whatever. So twist. Any relation to former Punisher writer TM Chad Sinclair? No, no relation. Um, I've never met another Sinclair. There's a Bobby Sinclair from Florida that ripped, but I, I didn't know him. No relation. Um, and I'm, I'm in contact with this kid in the UK. His name is uh, Frankie Sinclair, and I'm going to meet him this summer. 
So, uh, yeah, no Sinclairs. But I did hear in, um, f from Rattray and, uh, um, from, um, yeah, from Rattray and, the, and the, the Scotland crew that Sinclair in Scotland is like Jones or Smith or Adams over here. So, pretty generic name. The Unknown Soldier. Many years ago, I sent you some park clips skating in socks. You politely responded. You didn't send me any socks, but it was still nice that you responded. Shit, man, you're welcome. Um, yeah, if if we sent out socks to every person that asked for socks, we would have no socks to sell, so I'm sorry. But, um, and I don't remember that clip or that email, but for, for a while, there was this thing called, like, the Toy Machine Sock Team. Yeah. I, I don't even know what that was. Like, it, like it was... Hashtag. Yeah, it was a hashtag, but I don't know what that was. I think it was a, I think it was a made-up thing, but, uh, so people are like, I'm on the sock team. I'm like, I don't, there... I don't have that list, you know? So, like, I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. But, uh, well, I don't think we're just going to send you socks. So, anyway, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe we should restart the sock team if there was one. I don't know. Other than Billy and Nick, are there any riders that you butt heads with or re or riders that require more management? <laughs> On the flip side, what riders do you worry about the least? Oh, that's a good one. Um, no, Billy and Nick uh, are the, the require the most, um, for sure. Um, but not, not, not really. They're kind of, they're just doing their own thing. Uh, and we don't butt heads. We just, uh, we just talk shit, you know? What riders do I worry about the least? Uh, Colin Provost. He's just doing it. Like, I don't have to tell him anything. He's out there killing it. He's doing it. He is one of the best skateboarders in the world. I just check in. I check in with Colin and I feel like I'm bugging him. Because... He's like, what's up, dude? And I'm like, just, hey, what you doing? He's like, fucking doing it. And I'm like, I know. And then, so, like, there's not even a conversation. So, I'm like, he just, I just let him do what he does. So, Colin Provost requires no management. He just kills things. And he's the best. Why don't any of the foundation guys have proper shoe hookups? I don't know. I wish I knew. It's harder and harder for people to get proper shoe hookups. Trust me. Do they deserve proper shoe hookups? Absolutely. Please, please. Pick them up. They rip. You'll love them too. If I could trade a rider from Toy Machine and Foundation for someone, who would you give up? Who would you take? Well, I'd give up Billy. I instantly. Give up Billy. Who would I get? Maybe Gerber. Because uh, the funnest trip I've ever been on was with Frank Gerber. It was a falling trip. I, I had to pull the van over because we were laughing so hard. Like, I was physically... It was uh, Tears were coming out of my eyes. We were laughing so hard. And, uh... So yeah, maybe I, but, but then if we had Billy, Frank, and Nick, holy shit, so I don't know. I don't know who I'd trade to get Frank, but uh, I'm just going to get Frank, so Frank's, <laughs> Frank's the man. Skating aside, what's a common thing that people do in the van to earn brownie points? What will they do to blow it? Uh, there's no brownie points in the van. The, be the best thing that someone could ever do in the van is just keep it clean, like it's like, it gets so dirty in there so fast, like, Dan Lu, Axel, like, these guys stand out in my mind who, like, uh, I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Like, everybody's in the store, like, dude, I'm cleaning out the van. I'm like, oh, mine's blown, you know? I'm like, whoa, they're cleaning the van out? Holy shit, these guys rule. So, thank you. Um, that's the brownie points. But it doesn't get them anything. It just gets us a better smelling van, you know? So, I appreciate it more than you would ever know. So, thank you. What, what, does somebody, what will they do to blow it in the van? Oh man, the li it's unlimited. Like disrespecting it, burning the burning the seats, like carving something in the roof. Uh, the worst shit. I own my own van, so they respect it. I feel like they respect it a little bit more. So um, the Tummy Tummyetto van, they know that that's all they got. When that Tummyetto van blows up, I don't know what's gonna happen. But uh, I have my own team van, so they seem to respect that one a little bit more, I think, because they know that I bought it. So it's like, um, they're not like extra careful, but I, they're not doing any dumb shit. Everybody's, everybody's cool, you know? Um, little CJ wrote like, fuck yeah, on the, on the wall or something of the van. I was like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, what? And I was like, you gotta clean that off, dude. And he was like, I do. <laughs> and then uh, I couldn't yell at him. He was so little and so innocent, I was like, Hey man, <laughs> this is the fucking this is a van, you know. Come on. He so he cleaned it off. It's still there though. You can, it was like a little kid scribble, like it was not, not even scribble. It was like this big, and then but it was like a little kid cleaned it off. So it's, it's still there. 
Shire Flip, is that what it's called? Would you compete at Battle at the Berries <laughs> if all the competitors must have a body fat percentages of BAM or greater? You know, like a fat boy battle at the Berries. I don't know, he, something, something's up with his um, autocorrect, because I, I know he's talking about the barracks, but I kind of like Battle at the Berries, because this fat guy's Battle of the Berries, that would be good. Um, would I compete? Yeah, I would compete. But I would lose for sure. Uh, but yeah, I would compete. That would be fun. All the fat guys in there? <laughs> Hell yeah. Somebody make that happen, please. Craig Lutzka must be from... I didn't know Craig Lutzka was from North Carolina. Because they said, um, What makes Italian Pizzeria 3 in Chapel Hill the best pizza? Is it the cheese, the dough, or the candy sweet tomato sauce? So whoever this is, I've probably eaten... We've ate at the same place. Maybe we've ate together. I don't know who Craig Lutzka is. But I know who Greg Lutzka is in that photo. That photo is amazing, by the way. But uh, you know what? If you look over there, I have a I have a business card of the restaurant they're talking about. Italian Pizzeria 3. Let me see what it says. IP3, the place to be. Uh, Angelo and Vincent are the owners. 508 West Franklin Street. Not much of a business card, but uh, I kept this business card because I had the bright idea. I love this pizza so much. Every time I go back there, I uh, I love it. I go there as much as I can. And I was going to ask them if they could freeze it and send it to me in California. I just haven't had time to call them and see if they would do it. This this is my favorite pizza. I'm not telling... Well, you know when you tell somebody, this best place, best pizza, then no one likes it. But this is my favorite pizza. And I'm going to see if they'll freeze it and send it to me. So um, That's funny that I had the business card sitting there on my desk when uh, Craig Lutzka is asking about it. Crail fish to revert. Um, who would you rather spend the afternoon furniture shopping with, Todd or Ed? I need a new couch. Who am I gonna go with, Todd or Ed? Dude, that's hard, man. I'm going. I'm taking them both. What, what do you mean, either or? I'm taking them both. Todd's gonna have the thing to put the couch in to deliver, and Ed is gonna be able to test it out with me. We're both big boys. We can test out the couch. We need them both. Both of their furniture shopping. So. I'm taking them both. I know that's not a choice, but I'm taking them both. Um, Shifty Flip. Have you ever been to Chocolate World in Hershey, PA? No. I'm not even going to read the rest of this thing. But I want to bad. Uh, uh, I know what you're talking about. I've never been. I have to get there. Twizzlers taste completely different when bought there. Melt in your mouth. Everything's incredible fresh there. They aren't red vines, but if you need a freshy box scent anytime, we can trade boxes. <laughs> Only if I can get a decline box back. Fresh Rolos are worth their weight in gold. Well, this dude knows what's up. If I had some declines, I would gladly trade them for candy. Somebody please. Merlino, if you have some old declines at your house, we're going to get some some good snacks out of this dude right here. So, um, Didi, are Cole and Aiden still married? If not, when did they get divorced? Um, no, they got divorced. Cole and Aiden got divorced eight months ago? Something like that? Um... But Jaws is still married. I'm positive Jaws is still married. Any updates on the Mike and Bill show? No, there's no updates. Um, uh, I think we were dead in the water from the start on that one. I'm blaming it on Bill. So when Bill gets his slap questions, you can ask him why the show never happened. The show almost happened, though. That was ridiculous. I can't believe they were going to do that. Bagel Skate. Wawa Sheets or Rofo? I never heard of Rofo. I don't know where this dude's from, but... Um, Wawa is usually in the northeast. Sheets is down south. I mean, Wawa is OG, so I'm going to go with that one. And I feel like the bread's a little bit better. Um, Sheets, Sheets blows your mind. It has everything. It's incredible. Um, the Australians came to uh, the East Coast, and we hit Sheets every night. They couldn't believe it. Um, they wanted, they were wanting to eat at Sheets rather than go to restaurants. So <laughs> it was pretty crazy. Uh, Rofo, I'm gonna have to look that up. Uh, if I see it on the road, I'll definitely stop at a Rofo. Um, do you think Duffel will ever get in the van with a new crew? Yeah, abs absolutely. Has he yet with a new crew? No, I don't. I don't think so because the trips that we've been taking have been so like mixed trips, like half toy, half foundation. Like it's been a long time since we've taken like a foundation tour. So he hasn't been in the van with all of them yet, but. Duffel is um, in SF, so or in Walnut Creek, so it's it's harder for him just to get in the van with the dudes. You know, they're leaving from Long Beach, LA area. 
Do you go to any Durham Bulls games? Their food is amazing. Um, I've been to some Durham Bull games. I'm not a baseball fan, though, but uh, uh, I'm a Durham fan, and uh, their food is good. The Tobacco Road House or whatever, Tobacco Road Cafe, whatever it's called, that place is good. Um, this must be somebody from Durham, so I gotta check up what maybe Rofo is like some new, something new I haven't hit yet in my old zone. Sold out. When is Austin Thong Vaughn going to get that bump up to Am? He's Am. He's on. Um, I mean, consider it bumped. He's bumped right now, officially. We haven't ran an ad in a long time, so maybe that's the official bump. But like, he's he's on. The, he's an amateur for Foundation. Absolutely. He's so sick, man. He's permanently stoked. We love him. He's in Portland, Oregon. And he's so, so rad. And it's actually, I said his name wrong. So his name is actually Tong Vivong. But I still call him Thong Vivong because I like that better. But it's uh, Tong Vivong. So that's that's his real name. So Tong Vivong is amateur for Foundation Skateboards, if you guys want to know. Have you ever seen Tom Penny skateboard in person? If so, spill every last bean you got. Um, yes, I have seen Tom Penny skate in person in the, in the glory days. I was, uh, uh, of his, like the peak of, well, I don't know, everybody has a different opinion of, you know, Tom Penny, but this was a long time ago. And I was sitting outside, I was sitting outside a trade show and I don't know if you can see this, but I had my feet like this and I was back up against the wall and I was exhausted from being in the trade show. And then my buddy was sitting right beside me and he had his feet out too. And they were just kind of just talking and nothing was going on. We were ready to go home. And then we didn't even notice, but we just hear like click. And then whew, Tom Penny just ollied our legs. And we we're like, holy shit, that was fucking Tom Penny. And that was, that's my Tom Penny story. Just like, he just ollied right over us without even, yeah, without even saying a word. But yeah, Tom Penny's magical. Um... What is up with Duffman and Foundation? Things seem estranged. Well, I shall tell you. Duffman lives five hours away from the majority of the team, so it's hard for him to get in the van. It's hard for him to skate with the dudes all the time. It's hard for him to meet up with our filmer. So maybe that's why things seem estranged, but... Um, Everybody respects him. He's Corey Duffel. He's the legend on the squad, man. He's the he's the team leader. You know, he's the Duff man. So um, I'm sure if we all lived in this area, things would look and seem a little different. If he lived in, in L.A., things would also look and seem a little different, maybe not feel so estranged. But everybody respects the Duff man. So he, he knows what's going on. If he wants to come skate with us, he's more than welcome. He invites us up to his house all the time, but it's hard to get the crew up there. So hell, he's been on for... 15 years or something. So we've gone through two batteries, uh, two memory cards, and we're getting there. Chicken bone, now it's gone. Favorite barbecue restaurant in North Carolina? That is called the Q Shack in Durham, North Carolina. If you're ever there, please check it out. It's really good. Mexican Spaniard, did Rusick retire when you took over all TM positions at Yeddo? No, he was retired before I got there, but Rusick is sick. I, I barely know him. But I was a fan of his skating, and um, yeah, he should still be there. I don't, I don't know why he retired so early, but Jacobs, as a pug daddy and wearer of all black kits, how are you controlling all that dog hair? It's tough. Let me go get the pug, and I'll show you how tough it is. All right, so here's the pug. Here's the fresh black shirt. This is how tough it is. Look, all you gotta do is take one pug, right this, and just kind of hold him like this, and give him a hug, right? You hear him growl? I mean, uh, how you doing, Milo? And you turn him around one time. You hold him like a full fat baby. You rock him one time, and you turn him back around. And you just hold him. And then you're like, all right, good boy. And then look, you're fucked. It's so bad. It's tough, man. Pugs is the only bad trait of a pug. That's it. So, yep. Yeah. I should probably wear white or gray, but uh, yep, yeah, that's the pug, number one pug problem. Okay, <laughs> Armin Tanzarian. My question, if I got a dog, I recently decided I'd name the dog Pringles. Do you beg this decision? Absolutely, Armin. 
Um, if not, what's a better snack food for the dog? Pringles, dude. You got it. Pringles. Pringles the pug. Hopefully it's a pug. It's got a good flow. Something must break now. Do you look like a thumb? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. A big old pink thumb. How does it look? Should I get close to it or not? If that, yeah. Big old fat pink thumb. It's all, it's all the neck. When the neck goes down, the face comes back, but it's going to be a while. Soda jerk. Have you, oh, have you given up on your weight? No. I'm still down 20. I got a long way to go. If I can get under 200, I'll be straight, but I'm not. It's got a, got a ways to go. Any regrets about doxing Gip? Yes. I told him I was sorry. I will never dox anybody ever again. Ever been to therapy? Uh, I'm in therapy right now, but it's uh, physical therapy. It's toe, my toes fucked up. I'm um, getting my toe worked on. Death turd. You have a mean shove at heel. What's the secret? There's no secret. It just like I, this is, uh, there's only a couple things that still work. That one works somehow. So thank you for liking my Vero heel or a shove it heel is what you call it. I call it a Vero heel. But Vero, nobody knows what a Vero is anymore. But I call it a heel shove because you kind of heel and then you shove. You don't really shove then you heel. But maybe you should. I call it a heel shove. <laughs> shove heel. <laughs> it's all good. I, I'm stoked. I can still do it. Um, how's the search for Merlino's golden vagina going? Seems like a bad sequel to Lord of the Rings. That he so for those of you guys that don't know, Nick had a had a uh, necklace. There was a family heirloom, and it was a golden vagina, and he lost it on a trip, and he lost his mind. So we look to see how much like could we get this made this is probably thousands of dollars or whatever and we found some on ebay they're like 12 bucks <laughs> it's like nick you can figure it out but he says that one was real gold i'm sure it is but i don't know nick he'll get another golden vagina but it was from his you know it's passed down from family air i just want to know who who originally had the golden vagina in his family gary ate my peanuts how do you feel about taylor smith <sighs> taylor smith one of the best skateboarders Ever. Dude, Taylor Smith. He was a kid from San Diego and he's so damn good. And he quit for mystery and then he disappeared. I, I don't know. I don't know what where he's at or what he's doing. I I called him when he released that part, I think it was Shep Dogs five? Four. Four? It was it was his last Shep Dogs part. I gave him a call, and um, it wasn't like I was talking to the same dude. He just was like, seemed like he was he was either caught off guard that I called him, or he just really didn't give a fuck. And um, I I just congratulated him. I was like, dude, that part is insane. I hope you're doing good. And he's like, yep, gotta go, dude. Taking out the trash or something. I was like, what? what? So I was like, well, damn it. I guess I'll never call Taylor Smith again. But if he's watching or anybody knows him, I mean, dude. He is incredible, man. I can't believe. Oh, I wish he was still a part of the Foundation crew. Like, he's so, damn it, he's so good. Taylor Smith, John Clemens, with the current team. Holy shit, man. Too good. Too much good talent out there, man. If you've ever seen him in person, I mean, you've seen his video parts, but if you ever seen him in person, it's a different thing then his videos his videos are absolutely insane so imagine seeing it live it's like it's mind-blowing and he's good and he was cool it's probably still is cool i just i don't know what ha i don't know what happened he he quit to ride for mystery skateboards and then i never he he vanished man um i saw the san francisco part that he did so maybe he's living up there and i hope hope something's working out for him because he is so sick i yeah i was stoked to surprise him to give him his first board that was uh I remember what year that was, but it was just T Spliff, American flag, and you know, I was psyched. I wish I said I don't keep anything, but yeah, I wish I had one of those boards. Taylor was probably on foundation for two or three years. I think Windsor approached him, and uh, I don't know. I don't even remember Windsor writing for Mystery. Do you? For the second time? Yeah, something happened. Something something didn't work out over there. But um, yeah, we miss him for sure. If that was somebody, I can't remember the guy's name, he's like, hey, who's a rider? Like, I said, Nick Trapasso, like, I'll take Nick and Taylor back to get in the van. They, I mean, dude, so sick. Thank you for submitting your questions, Slap Pals. We're done.
Thank you.